Serve us they, you poor people. Nancy, my sister-in-law, sneered at the homemade dishes laid out on the table. I was too shocked to speak. How can you expect us to eat this pathetic food? Can't you even serve steak? Are you poor or just stingy? Serve steak already. Mary, her mother, had lovingly prepared the meal for their long-awaited return, but Nancy tossed her fork aside. Nancy had pushed the family business onto John, my husband and the second son in their family, and lived as they pleased, only showing up after five years. Her husband, Daniel, was still under her selfish thumb. What? This food looks terrible. We made the effort to come here, and this is all you can offer? Nancy cursed at the food set before her. Beside her, Daniel was smirking. Why did they even come back? No matter that he's the eldest son, this was not the right way to reunite. I was at my breaking point, but John's feelings were likely more complex and intense. This is the last time we'll be seeing you. John stood up and spoke to Daniel and Nancy in a low voice. It was the first time I had seen the usually gentle and kind John show such a stern expression. My name is Victoria Smith, a 45-year-old housewife. I've been married to John, the second son of the Smith family, for 12 years. Now, we live with John's parents and our 10-year-old daughter in his family home. Until our daughter Emma turned one, we lived in an apartment near my parents' place. Having my mom close by during my pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum period was a great comfort. If possible, I would have liked to stay near my mom until Emma got a little older, but everything changed nine years ago on the day of that family meeting. I mentioned it beforehand, but today we're going to talk about the future of this house. It was Nancy, Daniel's wife, who brought it up in a tone that suggested she found it bothersome. Nancy, with her flashy clothes, makeup, and way of speaking, looks much younger than me. But, she's the same age as I am. Daniel, John's older brother, is weak-willed and can't stand up to Nancy. Yet, he always acts tough towards his parents, Mary and Kevin, and my husband John. After drifting from one job to another, saying each wasn't right for him, he seemed like a hopeless guy to me. That hopeless guy then spat out, sounding even more annoyed. Let's get this over with. John and I had been vaguely informed that we were summoned to discuss our future. I was worried that something might be wrong with Mary or Kevin's health, but it didn't seem to be the case, which was a bit of a relief. I had left my daughter Emma with my mom so she wouldn't interrupt the discussion. I'm sorry. Thanks for gathering despite your busy schedules. Really? We could have handled this over the phone instead of coming all the way out to this rural area. Anyway, let's get started quickly. In front of us, Mary and Kevin sat looking apologetic. For some reason, they seemed smaller than usual, and I felt a little sorry for them. We've managed so far, but recently our bodies just haven't been cooperating. We're thinking it might be time to step down. Step down? Do you mean retiring? Or are you closing the shop? John seemed a bit surprised. The family business was a small construction company. Besides Mary, who handled the office work, there were about three employees, and it had been a trusted, steady business in the community for 40 years, unaffected by the economy. We thought about closing it, but we still have ongoing projects, and there might be more coming up. So, we called you to see if there's a way to keep it going. That's why, John, we want you to take over. What? Wait a minute. You can't just drop this on me. I have my job and my family. You don't have kids yet, so you are more flexible. Because you have a kid, you're the better choice. Your child is happier in nature, right? And wouldn't it be great for her to live with her grandparents? Right, Victoria? 
I tried to process the sudden news, my mind racing. So, you're saying John should quit his job to take over the construction company, and we should move here as a family to live with Kevin and Mary? Exactly. You seem like you fit right into rural life. We're counting on you. There's no way we can make such an important decision on the spot. John was right. Well, they might as well just shut down the company otherwise. Nancy said that offhandedly. But that won't work, right? John, consider our parents' feelings and take this on willingly. But there is the option of you guys taking over the business, right, Daniel? No, Nancy, being a city girl, can't handle living out here. And if mom and dad get sick, there will be caregiving responsibilities too. I clearly remember feeling sickened by how they talked about their parents as if they were a burden. During my pregnancy, Mary and Kevin frequently sent fresh vegetables from the countryside, and when Emma was born, they rushed over to hold her lovingly. So, seeing them now, looking apologetic and downcast, made my heart ache. Please let us think about it on our own for a while. It didn't take long for us to decide to live together after that day. We moved far from my parents, and John changed jobs for us to live together with Mary and Kevin. I needed a certain level of determination, but I think John's resolve was much greater than mine. He quit his job and stepped into a completely unknown world. Victoria, thank you. I'm not confident about running the construction business, but I'll do my best so you and Emma won't have any troubles. I'm counting on your support. Even then, John asked me sincerely. John's kindness is something he inherited from his parents. Kevin and Mary will help us, so let's not stress too much. Thank you for everything. And so, our life together began. The saying, it's easier done than said, held true, as living together turned out to be stress-free, and we quickly adapted to rural life. With John around, Kevin regained his energy and was often busy going out to the sites or giving John advice. Mary still works as an office clerk. Supported by them, John has become a respectable business owner. Emma, who was one year old, grew up loved by Mary and Kevin and is now 10 years old. She loves animals, especially horses. Grandpa, Grandma, let's go to the ranch. There is a ranch a short drive away, and Mary and Kevin often took her there. One Sunday afternoon, Emma was asking Mary and Kevin to take her to see the animals again. Maybe I should go too. John got up from where he was relaxing in the living room as he said that. Then Mom should come too. Yeah, I guess I'll go too. Yeah, let's all go. And let's get ice cream. Emma was excited. It had been a while since we all went out together, so I felt a little excited too. Everyone got ready and headed out the door. Just as we were about to get into the car to leave. Cool car. I looked in the direction Emma was pointing and saw a flashy convertible heading our way. I had a bad feeling. The car didn't slow down and came to a rough stop right in front of us. This is the worst. My hair is all gritty from the dust. My skin feels rough too. This is why I hate the countryside. We should have put the top up as soon as we got off the highway. I forgot how dusty it can be out here. As I expected, it was Daniel and Nancy getting out of the car. This was the first thing they said after showing up unannounced for the first time in five years. Grandma, who are these people? You haven't seen them in a long time, so it's no wonder you don't remember. This is your dad's older brother and his wife. Hello. Daniel and Nancy barely glanced at Emma despite her greeting them. What's going on? Why are you here all of a sudden? Do we need a reason to come? This is my family hall. Meeting them after five years, they seemed even more unpleasant than before. Still, Mary, 
who seemed to adore Daniel, said with a smile. Of course not. I'm glad you came. We were just about to go to the ranch. Would you like to come with us? The ranch? Why would I go to a place that smells like animals? I wish they'd just leave. Why did they come here? Oblivious to my irritation, Emma was excited. The ranch doesn't smell. The animals are so cute. Come with us. Hey, tell this kid something. Well, what's your name again? I'm Victoria. They had even forgotten my name. Oh, right, Victoria. Look, we've been in the car for a long time and we're tired. Aren't you supposed to offer us some coffee and let us rest before dragging us out? I'm sorry. I'll get some coffee right away. Please come in. Hiding my discomfort, I opened the door and invited them inside. Mom, what about the ranch? I'm sorry. We'll definitely go on the next break. I whispered softly to Emma, who looked like she was about to cry. Even though she's still a child, Emma has developed a bit of maturity and seemed to understand my situation. Okay, I'll go play with my friends then. Emma left the house. Then, everyone except Emma sat in the living room. This house hasn't changed at all. Aren't you going to remodel it? You're earning now, right? It seems like things are going well. I like the old design. But eventually, we'll need to make some updates. Really? So, you must have saved a lot by now? Not really. And we never know what might happen with the construction business. So we need to keep some savings. We're not struggling. But we're not exactly swimming in money either. Nancy kept glancing at me. You still dress like you shop at discount stores. Her condescending attitude towards me hadn't changed. If you're not struggling, you should spend a little more on fashion. You're probably just saving up and hoarding money, aren't you? It was strange how much they were probing into our finances, especially considering they arrived in an expensive car and were decked out in flashy designer clothes. I could imagine they were living quite comfortably. What on earth are they here for? To brag about their wealthy lifestyle? It was hard to believe they came just to see Mary and Kevin, but it was equally hard to think they came without any purpose. Hey, are you seriously just giving us coffee? We haven't had lunch, you know. The clock showed 3 p.m. Nancy pulled out a cigarette, looking annoyed. I'm sorry, it slipped my mind. I'll prepare something right away. I hurriedly stood up and headed to the kitchen. Mary followed me. Mary, I'll take care of it. You should go talk to them. It's been a while since you've seen them. It had been five years since they last saw Daniel and Nancy. Despite their quirks, I'm sure she was happy to see them. It's been a while, so I want to make something for them. It won't be fancy, though. Mary's warm smile erased my unpleasant feelings. I hope I can become someone as gracious as her someday. Then I'll be your assistant, Mary. Mary is a genius in the kitchen. She didn't really need an assistant. While I prepared one dish, she skillfully made several delicious dishes with whatever was in the fridge. We carried the dishes and set them on the table. The table was now full of appetizing food. I'm sorry for the wait. It's been a while since you had Mary's cooking, right? Please help yourselves. However, Nancy didn't hide her displeasure and tossed the fork aside. What? This food looks terrible. We made the effort to come here, and this is all you can offer? I couldn't believe my ears. But I calmed myself and asked, Is there something you don't like? That's not what I'm saying. Nancy, possibly irritable from hunger, spoke even more harshly. The food might not be fancy, but Mary made it with love. How can she say such things? I was filled with sadness and anger. So, what do you mean? Serve us steak, you poor people. I was too shocked to speak. How can you expect us to eat this pathetic food? 
Can you even serve steak? Are you poor or just stingy? Serve steak already. Daniel just watched Nancy's outrageous behavior with a grin. I was at my breaking point. I've swallowed my pride many times, but today is unforgivable. It felt like Mary's heart was being trampled on, and I couldn't stand it. Just as I was about to snap back, John stood up before I could say anything. This is the last time we'll be seeing you. What? I had never seen such a stern look on his face. John was usually so gentle, and Nancy seemed taken aback for a moment. What do you mean by last time? Daniel, who had been smirking at the situation, now looked flustered. It means exactly what it sounds like. We won't be seeing each other again. When did you get so high and mighty? Just because you took over the business, don't get cocky. I'm the eldest son. I have the authority in this house. You were just born before me. That's all. You haven't done anything as the eldest son or as a family member. You don't have any authority over this house. What did you say? Daniel stood up. He clenched his fists, his face turning bright red. Despite his weak nature, he was quick to anger. Unlike Mary, Kevin, and John, who were all calm, I wondered who he took after. Stop it. This is going to get messy. It was Nancy who stopped Daniel, who looked like he was about to hit John. I'll make sure this is the last time we meet if that's what you want, but it won't come for free. We're adults. You understand that, right? So that's it. I finally understood why they suddenly showed up. They had come to ask for money. These two always showed up when it involved money. It had been five years, so I had forgotten. But John remained calm. I understand. I've been waiting for this day. Waiting? Nancy looked frightened at John's smiling response. Yes. We've all been eagerly waiting for this day. Everyone in the community. We couldn't wait for this day to come. What does he mean by that? John had never mentioned anything like this to me. What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? In contrast to John's calm demeanor, Nancy was losing her composure. I'm glad you came sooner than expected. Honestly, I felt bad keeping everyone in the community waiting any longer. So you're saying we've been keeping everyone here waiting? I don't get it. Explain what you mean. Nancy was panicking, unable to understand what was being said. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? No, nothing. No, you should have an idea. Here you are. John pulled a stack of papers from a drawer and handed it to the bewildered Daniel and Nancy. What? What is this? You'll understand when you look at it. Daniel's face turned pale as he flipped through the stack, realizing what it was. You understand now, right? Don't tell me these don't look familiar. What? What is all this? I have no idea. Daniel's eyes darted around and sweat was pouring down his forehead. John began reading the contents of the papers aloud. George, $5,000. Richard, $10,000. Edward, $10,000. These are all IOUs from Daniel to his local friends and relatives. Should I read them all out? Stop it. Daniel hastily grabbed the stack of papers from John. What? Debt. You have debts here too. Let me see. Nancy snatched the stack of papers from Daniel, who had just grabbed them from John, and began examining each one. $5,000, $10,000, $3,000. What is this? What the hell is this? It's all the money Daniel borrowed. The total is over $100,000. What? You've got to be kidding me. Why did you borrow all this money? Did you lie to me? Nancy threw the stack of papers at Daniel. I had no choice. 
I wanted to see you happy. According to Daniel, he borrowed the money to buy the expensive brands, flashy cars, and the condo that Nancy liked. I bought many things for you, but the loan payments for the car and the condo are tough. And you never cook at home. We always eat out. You don't save any money. You leave all the finances to me. So you're saying it's all my fault. Your earnings are the problem. How can we save anything with what you make? And who's the one losing all the time because they suck at gambling? I'm sorry, but you gamble with me too. Every time we lose, you tell me to borrow more because we'll definitely win next time. You're the one who made me use the credit cards for loans. Daniel had loved gambling since he was young. Before getting married, Daniel would spend his entire salary on gambling, playing not only on holidays, but also whenever he had free time on weekdays. When he got engaged to Nancy, Daniel was short on funds and promised Mary and Kevin that he would be more serious from then on, so they had helped him out, as John had once told me. Despite this promise, he had continued gambling. Nancy who married Daniel, also got deeply involved in gambling. They probably came here after racking up significant debt on credit cards, begging for money. Given this, it's no wonder Nancy, with her fiery personality, was so furious when their new debts were uncovered. Why are you racking up debt? You don't even have the income to pay it back. I did it all for you. I wanted to make you happy. Shut up. Stop blaming everything on me. I hadn't been told that Daniel had borrowed money from just about everyone he knew locally. John must have wanted to spare me the worry. I was surprised by this turn of events, but it wasn't surprising that Daniel and Nancy had ended up this way. They had been living beyond their means. Why don't you calm down and have some coffee? When I suggested this, Nancy glared at me. Why are you pretending to be nice? You probably think we deserve this, don't you? It's all your fault for not letting Daniel take over the construction business, so fix it. We're family, aren't we? Nancy's anger was now directed at our family as well. Her accusations were ridiculous and made no sense. Had she forgotten that nine years ago, she had refused to live in this rural area. Since that day, John had worked tirelessly at a job that was completely new to him. That's why we've come this far. Nancy seemed to calm down a bit after directing her anger at our family. Anyway, you can default on these local debts, but we need to repay the credit card loans. Our assets are also ours, so give us our share right now. Think of it as getting our inheritance early. How could she say such terrible things in front of Mary and Kevin? I was shaking with anger, but John didn't show any reaction. It can be helped. John replied calmly. Nancy's face lit up. Oh, you're so understanding. As expected of you, John. If you get it, then give us the cash quickly. Then we'll leave and never come back. We won't need anything from this house anymore. All right, I'll give it to you. Victoria, has everyone gathered? John asked me, and I opened the front door to check outside. The local people had already gathered. Please call them in right away. John had asked me to do this right after Daniel and Nancy showed up. The list he gave me had the phone numbers of the people who are now gathered. I had contacted them without knowing the reason. I invited everyone into the yard. I wasn't sure how many people there were, but the large yard was filled with local people. They were all people who had lent money to Daniel and hadn't been repaid. Later, I heard that John knew Daniel and Nancy were drowning in credit card debt and couldn't see a way out. Daniel had listed John and Kevin as contacts without their permission, so they'd been receiving calls from multiple credit card companies. 
That's why John had anticipated that they would come begging for money soon. Please be patient a little longer. Daniel and Nancy will definitely come back. When they do, I want to repay you in front of them. John went around to each house, asking the locals for their understanding. After taking over from Kevin, John worked earnestly and sincerely, valuing his relationships with people, everyone trusted him. John and the locals who believed in him had eagerly awaited this day. Unaware, Daniel and Nancy walked right into the situation. For Daniel, it must have been an unexpected turn of events. He couldn't say anything in front of his friends and relatives, and just looked down in embarrassment. No one spoke to Daniel. They only looked at him with disdain. I'm truly sorry for the trouble Daniel has caused you. Thank you for trusting us. As promised, I will repay the money he borrowed right in front of him. John apologized to each person and paid off Daniel's debts. Mary and Kevin, standing next to John, also apologized to everyone. Unable to bear watching, I apologized as well. Stop it. That money is ours, isn't it? Cut it out. Nancy, unable to accept the situation, screamed hysterically beside the elderly Mary and Kevin, who were apologizing. Give it back. Nancy tried to snatch the envelopes full of cash from John's hands. Daniel just stood there, unable to say anything. Be quiet. Kevin, who hadn't said a word until then, spoke in a low, commanding voice. It was the first time Kevin, who had never raised his voice in front of us, spoke sternly. Even Nancy fell silent, looking frightened. I won't allow you to disrespect these people any further. But it's our money. Without it, we're finished. Nancy collapsed to the ground, crying. I'm sorry for their disgraceful behavior. Kevin apologized to the locals once again, and then spoke to Daniel and Nancy. This money was earned by John, who suddenly became the president of a construction company after being a salaried worker. He worked desperately to earn it. I can't imagine how difficult it must have been. John shook his head. But having watched him closely, I knew the struggles he went through. And Victoria has been diligently saving money while supporting John in this unfamiliar place. I am truly sorry that we have to use their savings to pay off your debts. Kevin's words brought tears to my eyes. Nancy, it's not our money. You two pushed the construction company onto John and Victoria because you didn't want to live in the countryside and now you have the nerve to say that. Have you no shame? The two of them couldn't say anything. Daniel placed his hand on Nancy's shoulder. Don't touch me. Nancy angrily shook off his hand and cried out. I wish I had never married you. I could have been much happier without you. No matter who she married, it would have been the same. She enjoyed a flashy lifestyle and the thrill of it, always wanting more money and never having enough. And she blamed someone else, never trying to change herself. Ignoring Nancy's continued crying, John finished repaying everyone who had gathered. Finally, Mary, Kevin, John, and I apologized again. As the locals left, thanking us instead, I was relieved that we hadn't let them down, and that it didn't end in betrayal. No one spoke to Nancy or Daniel until the very end. I'm sorry for keeping it from you, and I'm sorry for acting on my own without consulting you. John apologized, but there was no way I could disagree with his actions this time. Once everyone left, a quiet time followed, with only Nancy's sobbing breaking the silence. John was the first to speak. We're no longer family. So don't ever come to our house again. Daniel just stood there in a daze at John's words. This is the last time. So if there's anything you want to take with you, 
Take it all now. I'll dispose of whatever's left of your belongings. I remembered that Daniel's childhood albums and graduation certificates were still in the room upstairs. Thinking about how Mary had carefully preserved them pained me, but when I saw the untouched food left on the table, my feelings quickly turned cold. I don't want them to visit ever again. I want them to take everything and leave no trace behind so that we can't even remember their existence. These people were no longer family. I felt sorry for Mary, but I didn't want them to leave anything behind. Please pack everything into this, take everything, leaving nothing behind, so you have no reason to come back. Daniel snatched the large bag I handed him and went upstairs. After a while, he came down, dragging his belongings, and silently helped Nancy to her feet, heading toward the door. As she walked, Nancy glanced into the paper bag. She was checking to see if there was anything valuable inside. That was so typical of Nancy. What's the point of taking this stuff back? It's worthless. What are we going to do now? I'll figure something out. Let's just go home. You can't fix this, which is why we came here. What are we going to do? Were they still planning to argue? I didn't care, but I wished they would do it after they left. At 5 p.m., Emma came home. Hi. Oh, I'm so hungry. Her bright demeanor lightened the mood. Wow. Look at this feast. It looks delicious. She was delighted to see the untouched food we had prepared for Daniel and Nancy. The same food that Nancy had insulted as pathetic now made Emma's eyes sparkle. We'll reheat it and enjoy it together as a family of five once they're gone. Are uncle and auntie leaving already? Emma looked disappointed. They have to go because they have something to do. I answered on behalf of Daniel and Nancy, who said nothing. I wanted to go to the ranch with them. Daniel and Nancy left without looking back at Emma's words. Later, Daniel and Nancy continued to take out more credit card loans to repay their existing ones. And they spent their days gambling, dreaming of a big win. But there was no such reversal, and when they found themselves in dire straits, Daniel shamelessly tried to borrow money from his local friends again. It was amazing he even dared to ask. No one would lend money to Daniel, who had lost everyone's trust. By that time, he no longer had any friends. With no one to help them, they defaulted on their condo loan and had to give it up. Naturally, they also lost the flashy convertible to repay their debts and eventually declared bankruptcy. We learned they were admitted for addiction treatment when the hospital called us. Unable to pay their hospital bills, the hospital contacted John to request payment. They had listed John as the guarantor. Even at this stage, they were still causing trouble. Of course, John had no obligation to pay. He informed the hospital that he had no knowledge of this and that they must have listed him without his permission, refusing to pay the bill. What happened to them when they couldn't pay their hospital bills, we don't know, and we don't want to know. They are no longer part of our lives. A year has passed since that ordeal. It turns out John has a talent for being a business owner. The construction company continues to grow. The number of employees has increased, and Kevin, far from retiring, is more enthusiastic than ever. With Mary's help, I've been entrusted with the office work. I was worried about Mary. She had to cut ties with Daniel and Nancy in such a manner. She must be hurt. But thankfully, she seems to be doing well. She helps around the house and occasionally assists me with my work. She complains about having more to do than before, but she seems to enjoy it. 
Our days are busy, but filled with laughter. Today is a day off, so let's all go out. Yes. Where do you want to go? The ranch. Mary squints her eyes with a smile. Emma really loves animals. All right. I'll quickly make some lunch, so please wait a bit. Grandma's lunch. Yeah. John is probably still enjoying a lazy Sunday morning. These simple holidays are truly a joy. Grandpa, let's play cards while we wait. All right. But I won't go easy on you, so be ready. I won't go easy either, Grandpa. I'm not going to lose. I can hear the laughter of Emma and Kevin. I go to wake up John and help Mary with making lunch. May this happiness last forever. I made this wish as I put on my apron. <laughs>